building here. I'm out on the street. A nice little treat. Change it up a little, have something different. Hope you can hear me. <clears throat> it's raining a little, and I'm walking around with an unprotected antique computer. Why? <laughs> that shit happens to me all the time. I don't know why. This is a very old computer. It has a lot of my old files on it, which I thought that I took off and put in a hard drive, but I can't find my hard drive because uh, somebody must have needed it. See, when you're gone all the time, that stuff happens. <sighs> all my stuff that I own in the entire world is stashed in like a little one meter square area. <laughs> More about that later. But my hard drive's missing. I'm pretty sure the files I want are on this computer. I want some old, old pictures of Sevastopol back before uh, the referendum so you can see how shitty it was. <clears throat> I know I got some good pictures of these parks and stuff. I just gotta find them. They're not where I thought they were. They're not on my backup for some reason. So I gotta get... Oh, another thing that's missing is the cord for this computer. I gotta find a charger for it. I can't open it. And hopefully it'll work. It's been sitting for years in the closet. I wanted to clean it and put everything on a hard drive. I got a bunch of old computers laying around. This thing's an antique. Look how thick it is. My wife's kind of like a bag lady. You can't throw anything away around her. But anyway, I'll get those pictures. I'll find them. I got them somewhere. But uh, right now I'm on my way to the Rinka. And I uh, will get, uh, I'll try to get some video there, maybe. Maybe keep this going until uh, I get there. Might walk all the way, it's not far from here. There's this little uh, shopping area where they got, uh, people even sell used stuff. Or they used to, I hadn't been there in a while. Hope they still do. This one guy has uh, lots of, uh, old electronic equipment just in piles and you can pick out what you need and buy it real cheap. Oh, nice. Even in shitty weather, I love this city. Yeah, get a load of that, will ya? Just took the daughter to school. I like taking my kids to school. My wife thinks she's punishing me by having me do all this stuff. And uh, she can't figure out why uh, I'm happy. <laughs> well, don't want to talk too much about that. Russian women are pretty weird. <clears throat> All these guys in America think they're going to get a June Cleaver if they, uh, if they come over here. <laughs> lot of advertisers and uh, people businesses that commit some of that. Yeah, it can be true. It can happen. But you better know what you're doing. I mean, to make it happen, you, you've got to know what you're doing. The cultural differences are really hard to de define. <sighs> Maybe I'll do something on that sometime. It's like uh, English culture and uh, Russian culture were, and languages even were made to misunderstand each other. It's, it's amazing. It's almost like there's a animosity woven into the, into the substance of both, both cultures, just even in the languages. Russian language is very, very spare and uh, context driven. The grammar is built into the word form. English. English is Baroque. I love English. I'm a word freak. English is a very ornate language. And to use it properly, well, you're familiar with Shakespeare? Yeah, your brain does somersaults to follow the logic, but it's beautiful. Russians hate that. Oh, God. Maybe some really highly educated ones that are familiar with the principles, but just speaking to a Russian, even if you know Russian, and you're speaking in a very uh, English manner, you can't help it brain thinks like an Englishman and you use too many words it pisses them off. They think you're being silly and you're up to something. My kid was in a park once chasing pigeons around having a ball 
another kid, an older kid, comes up and he yells at him. Okay. Uh, a, a posh English boy would have said, I say that, young man, please don't frighten the pigeons. Russians would have think that's silly. Literally what the kid said was no scare. He didn't have to tell him what. There's only one person scaring shit and he's scaring pigeons. That's unnecessary information to a Russian. When you include a bunch of unnecessary information, it pisses them off. And when you smile too much, it pisses them off. And if they're assaulting you verbally or emotionally and you decide to be uh, uh, pip it, chin up, muddle through, and all that. You decide to be polite in return and calm. You don't lose your cool and you're kind back to them. You really lose it. They think you're really, really sneaky and disingenuous. It's hard for them to understand us. Especially when you have the, the gender thing thrown in there, the women. Yeah, they're women. Russian flavored women. Depends on which generation we're talking about, too. Oh, my generation is particularly touchy. If you're younger, you won't have as much problems. My wife was a Cozumel leader. She was hardcore, man. She's tough. And there's, you know, nice things about that, and there's things that are difficult. I'm still here. I like to describe it this way. Oh, I'll show you some of the scenery around here, man. It's, it's beautiful. This is, uh, this is, this used to be a flower market. I think it's, oh yeah, it's still here. It's been a long time since I've been in these buildings. I'm always in a big hurry. Too busy. Oh, I can get my hair cut there. I'm supposed to get a haircut. My wife demands my hair get cut a certain way. And if I don't, then I have to hear about it at length. Or I get punished. Now, once the nagging stops, the punishment phase begins. I don't want a haircut. I'll get one eventually. Well, I need a little trim, but, uh, you know, I'll do it when I want to do it. I'm sick of this crap. Anyhow... <laughs> I got distracted by the barber shop. It's pretty bad. Oh yeah, the way I like to describe my own life. <sighs> Many of you have seen the Pink Panther movies, Peter Sellers. He was funny. He was a scream. In spectacular. If you uh, saw those movies and you remember, he had a Chinese houseboy named Kato who was trained to attack him whenever he least expected it to keep him on his toes. Well, that's uh, that's the things you like for me. It's good for you. It makes you tough, emotionally tough. Develops your character, tries your patience. It's good for you. My home is my dojo and my sensei. Well, I'm married to my sensei. And I never know when she's gonna leap out of the cabinets or. You know, come flying out from under a curtain with a pair of nunchucks and just start beating the living day crap out of me. Or dog... <laughs> dog lights. Uh, yeah, something like that. But it's been good all in all. It's hard to describe that. I, I know this sounds horrifying, but it's good. It really is. I'm not a masochist. I believe in character. In adverse conditions will character. You need to exercise your mind. You just want to be entertained all the time, you're going to turn into something that's useless and worthless. That's all you ever do? I don't want to think about that. And then there's kids involved. Most Americans would have got a divorce a long time ago. And I could do that if I wanted to. No consequences. Probably lose all my property, but I don't have much. <laughs> uh, yeah. She starts on her ranch telling me I don't care about them. You know, right after I get back from living in my car in Pennsylvania so I could bring up a maximum amount of money. I say, you know, if, if what she's saying is remotely true, all I have to do is stop coming here. No consequences. 
but I'm not going to do that. Never. Anyway, I don't know how I got off on that. I guess it's nice to talk to people. <laughs> Even if people I don't know on YouTube. Oh, scenery. I wish I could switch this thing. You can't seem to switch it up when you're, uh, you want to change from one side to the other. Maybe I just don't know how the button disappears. I gotta go up those stairs. Oh, wait. They're, they're behind me now. Yeah. Good exercise here. You're always going up and down stairs. See, it's a bit of a slope on this street. It's like San Francisco. Rainy and hilly. And really hot and dry in the summer. Oh, the people are a little different. <laughs> they call uh, your uh, a certain kind of people uh, like you have in San Francisco. Here they call them Bula Boy, light blue. That's the slang word for them. That's kind of interesting. They're not persecuted here. You better not have any big activism things going in your face. You know, cultural terrorism. That doesn't go off very well. But, uh, you know, people are left alone here. Live and let live. Even the church. Actually, it's a little too live and let live. The Orthodox. <laughs> Uh, they, they just don't care what you do. You come in and you go to worship service and you don't, you don't mess that up and uh, everything's fine. You're on your own. You want to talk to somebody, fine. You want some help, fine. You know, they don't try to pin you down and stick uh, their dirty, greasy fingers into your soul and change things like uh, American Protestants sometimes do. Beautiful city, even in a day like this. A lot of vertical buildings. It's a new construction there. I'm gonna try to get that on camera. Limestone blocks. Oh wait, that's not it. There it is. Limestone blocks stuck together with uh, cement on a basically a concrete poster beam. One, two, three, four, four stories. Very small footprint. Oh, <laughs> that was my mouth. That was scary. Sorry about that. I'm going to go up the stairs now. I'm going to try to scoop this thing out a little bit, maybe get a little better, uh, a little better, uh, if I can hold it right. Get a little better uh, view of everything. Yeah. <laughs> People give me dirty looks for walking with a selfie stick. They make such assumptions about you. Oh, you're a narcissist. You like to see yourself on the internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you spend like three quarters of your income on clothes. Just give me the dirtiest look. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, this is nice. I think this will work. Uh, maybe I should make a video telling you what it's like to live here. The uh, upside to the downside. When I first came here, it was Ukraine. It was a lot different. I, uh, poetically, I think, called it uh, living in the ponder under the ro under the ponderous rotting carcass of the Soviet Union. I thought that was pretty neat. If I say so myself, it's apt. It's not that way here anymore.
corruption was rife. It made life a little easier though. You could just uh, throw money out of it and leave you alone. And it wasn't that much money. It was an amazingly small amount. Every once in a while it come back on you though. You did something major like put an addition on your house and try to do it totally legally. Yeah, they smelled money when you did that. Uh, me, or oh, excuse me, my my wife and my three children and I live in a little tiny one worm one worm one room workers flat, and I made an addition on it that's almost as big as the original apartment. It's still very small. It was paid for. It's in a great location. Uh, my wife is a natural born bureaucrat and she's got all the connections. She knows how to get stuff done, bureaucratically speaking. And she goes by the book, except when you have to bribe and she knows how to do it. And an economical, uh, an economical, uh, very economical way. She gets the most out of her bribes, but she can't do that anymore. But anyway. We built this addition and got everything totally legal, everything legit. All the inspections, all the permits, and we finished. The day after we got the paperwork, it's done, it's complete. Cop knocks on the door. This is an illegal uh, addition. Uh, you're gonna have to give me $7,000 or you're going to jail. My wife shows him all the documents. He says, oh, these are fake. These aren't real documents. Seven grand or you're going to jail. She says, uh, I can't have 7,000, come back tomorrow. She was personal friends with the mayor. So she went and told them, and they, uh, they had her put on a wire. Dude came back to get his money, yeah. Cops came in and grabbed him. He started bawling like a baby. He said his boss made him do it. The guy that ran the building department. I don't know if it's true or not, it's hard to tell. Probably true. That guy's still in charge, too. They didn't get rid of him. When this became Russia, they very few bureaucrats went out the window. They just shifted to Russia. Same corrupt people. It's just that uh, Russia leans on them and makes them act right as much as they can. But uh, this guy, as soon as everything's done with the referendum, we got a notice that they are going to send an excavator to our illegal addition off Monday unless we pay a special tax of $500. They use the Russian law now. It's just, this place is illegal under Russian law. She went up there to the main office and tried to show them our documents. Oh no, these are Ukrainian documents. We don't look at these. Those are, those are worthless. They're illegal. So we had to pay 500 bucks. I don't know if they really would have done it. Now that I got my uh, sea lakes here, I know things, how, how things work and how these these dull-witted idiots that are in charge of bureaucracy. That's how they think. I, I know how to step on their heads now. Had it do over, I'd uh, I'd have got me some uh, legal implements. And if they did send an excavator, I'd be ready for them. And it'd be in the news. And it, yeah, it would have blew up that way. They wouldn't like that. They would have backed off. I doubt they even sent one. They were just trying to shake us down. And they did. Well, I'm here, and it's raining, and my stupid old antique computer's getting wet. Oh. Yeah, we'll walk through here. See if that goes well. I have people yelling at me. I can't tell. They always do that. Not always. Often. Oh, man. It's coming down now. i got to put this computer inside my jacket. <sighs> ah, smells good. Fish. Riba. This is where they sell fresh fish and seafood and stuff. And you can smell it. And there's vegetables. This is the food area. This is all fresh from the farm. This isn't processed stuff from uh, factories. And clothing. Cheap clothing, but it's better than you find at Walmart. You can get anything done here. It's very nice. You got everything you've ever wanted. I'm going to see if my buddy's here. Still here. 
with his uh, electronics uh, magazine for you those of you that don't know magazine is uh, what they call stores in Russia it's really coming down <sighs> I have to put this thing on the radio when I get home I guess to find a plastic bag Be inside here pretty soon. Get a plastic bag and hopefully a charger. This might be so old he doesn't have one. I don't know. If he doesn't, I gotta find a way to get into this thing. Uh, it's an old HP. I don't know how old it can be more than five or six years, but it could be. Lose track of time to live like I do. And I don't remember why I replaced it. Hard drive might be uh, long wonky. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut this off. We'll call this good for now. I'll do another one later. I got too much to do. I can't be doing this uh, all at one time. I'll see you later.